Hello everybody and welcome! There's news around Kerbal Space Program 2, some of it exciting, but unfortunately some of them not so much. Let's start with the not so much part. The official Twitter account of KSP on May 20th tweeted out a message from the KSP2 development team stating that the release of the new game has been postponed until fall 2021. The reason why I have waited until now to publish this video is twofold. First, I had to get a response from a few contacts of mine in private division. And the second is that I waited for the July edition of PC Gamer to come out. They have a huge piece about Kerbal Space Program 2 and I wanted to see whether or not we learned something new through that. And boy, did we ever! So let's take this step by step. The UI has changed. Again. I love how the article states, fans screen capped an early UI and set about scrutinizing it, then says, let's take a magnifying glass to the more polished UI and put it in the tiny box in the lower left hand corner of the page. Hey PC Gamer, are you aware of the irony? Anyhow, let's dissect this again. If you remember my video where I analyzed the new interface of Kerbal Space Program 2, link in the description below or via the iCard, it is more or less the same layout wise. You have navigation on the left, time controls in the center and staging on the right. Kerbal portraits have now moved to the top center of the screen. All in all, it looks a lot more polished than what I have seen so far, that's true. But I still think a lot of KSP fans would want to have the nav ball in the center as they're used to. No word on whether or not that will happen or if there will be an option to switch to the old UI style, but I did communicate the concerns many of you had to my contacts within the KSP2 team. If you look at the number 8 here, it says the pause menu can be used to watch a tutorial, which is the perfect segue to the next point on this list. Tutorials will be context aware. I haven't seen this back in December when me and others from the KSP community were allowed to visit the KSP2 developers in Seattle. But the new article states that tutorials and help sections will be context aware. For instance, once you have left the atmosphere, you can pause the game and it will offer you a tutorial on how to execute a maneuver to escape Kerbin's gravity well. The game will allow you to perform this in VR space and afterwards you can try it for real with your vehicle. Not sure how many of these context-aware tutorials there will be, but creative director Nate Simpson claims that they will be bite-sized. For instance, splitting a mission to the moon into small chunks that you can consume right at the point where you need the new information. This will for sure make KSP2 easier for new players. By the way, I was lucky enough to get an interview with Nate at PAX West and I can confirm that he is full of passion for a Kerbal Space Program, the original game. I was part of a group of KSP YouTubers and community team members that were invited to Seattle to meet the new development team. What we took away from this meeting was that the new developers had a deep love for the original and were intent on making the best game possible. And all of us were confident that they could pull it off, given the necessary time and resources. But enough about my trip to Seattle, let's talk about another trip. Speaking of. The Interplanetary Trip Planner Another thing that will make Kerbal Space Program 2 more accessible is the inclusion of a feature that sounds like a crossover between a Delta V map and the mods Kerbal Engineer Redux and Transfer Window Planner. The dev team calls it Trip Planner and they admit that in the original game they also had to rely on mods to plan for a journey to a distant planet. The new feature will inform players how far each individual stage of a vehicle will take them. This is intended to reduce the frustration when planning for a mission and then not reaching the destination without really knowing why. I mean, for us veterans there's always the easiest solution. More boosters. Speaking of trips, this leads us to the next item. Permanent supply lines. Have you ever made a resource mining operation to refuel your space station or other vehicles just to give up after a few runs because it's just so tedious? 
Well, KSP2 offers a solution for you called Delivery Routes. It appears to be intended for colonies, but the main takeaway from the article is that once you have established a supply line between outposts, it will from then on continue automatically. No more tedious babysitting of fuel deliveries then? Well, we have to see what this feature will really look like, but as someone who has created an intricate resource mining operation twice, I welcome this idea a lot. While talking about intricate and a lot, well, both terms accurately describe how I like to build vehicles, so you forgive me if I have mixed feelings about the next item. Strict Vehicle Size Limits You heard that right. According to the PC Gamer article, I won't be able to create 10,000 ton monstrosities within the vehicle assembly building and then launch them into orbit on one go. There will be, and I quote, hard limits on the size of whatever you're building. Really? Come on, that's half the fun. But apparently this option is still there, because if you need more space to build, you just build it in base. Yes, orbital shipyards will be a thing. If you remember that huge interstellar ship from the announcement trailer and the early gameplay footage, this would be the perfect candidate to build in such a facility. It appears that that large engine won't even fit inside a regular vehicle assembly building. We still don't know what fuel type it will use, by the way. We also don't know much about the other solar system that we will be able to discover in case B2. Same with multiplayer, there were a few hints in the article, but not much to go on. That adventure is left to us. And yes, adventure is also another keyword. Adventure mode. Remember career mode in the original Kerbal Space Program? The developers of the sequel think it is too grindy. Sure enough, it was very technical. Fly to location X at altitude Y and perform action Z, which usually is just pressing the right button at the right time. Career mode in KSP2 will be more like an adventure mode, or so the developers claim. It will most likely be something like a campaign from launch your first rocket to colonize this remote solar system, forcing you to develop larger and more powerful spaceships along the way, unlocking parts and technology during this progression. They also make a reference to KSP-1's science mode, so expect some things in the new adventure mode to be similar to that. <laughs> and speaking of adventure, the entire development of Kerbal Space Program 2 so far has been quite adventurous. And this unfortunately makes me end on a bit of a downer. Delayed until fall 2021. Let's get back to the tweet informing us about the delay. The message cites the current coronavirus pandemic as one of the catalysts leading to the slipped release date. Don't worry, from what I have heard, the team is safe and healthy, which is certainly a relief. So let's first recap the timeline how we got here. In August 2019, Kerbal Space Program 2 was announced. A brand new game from a brand new development studio called Star Theory, while the original developer Squad would focus on continued improvement of the first KSP. Both operated under the umbrella of the publisher Private Division, which itself is sort of the indie arm of Take-Two Interactive. In September 2019, Private Division invited a few YouTubers and community members to Seattle to have a first look inside the development of KSP2, while also showing parts of the game during PAX West. I already mentioned this earlier. Up until this time, the date communicated was Spring 2020 for the release of KSP2. Only two months later, Take-Two in an earnings call said that the game would slip into their fiscal year 2021, which lasts from April 2020 until the end of March 2021. I already did a video about that, if you want to know more details, link again in the description or available via the iCard. Look at me then and look at me now. Look at what all this waiting did to me. Look at me. Look at me. Then we had silence for a while until February 2020 when we got a big update. 
and I mean significant. First private division sort of incorporated star theory into itself, moving most but not all of the original KSP2 developers in-house. The PC Gamer article claims the studio is now called Intercept, but I haven't seen that name in any official capacity yet. Many key people, including the aforementioned creative director Nate Simpson, were kept on board, which honestly came as a relief. They also said that they are now pursuing a larger vision for the game, which usually translates into it will take longer. And we got a few glimpses into Kerbal Space Program 2, including the fact that one of the new engines will have a pink exhaust plume. They also promised regular updates about the development of KSP2, but yeah, then all of that COVID-19 stuff happened. But I was assured by one of my contacts that they are planning on releasing more of these behind the scenes videos. No timeline on that, unfortunately. Now, at the end of March 2020, already within the release timeframe stated back in November, we heard that Kerbal Space Program 2 is now being targeted for Fall 2021, which is now even outside the fiscal year 2021 range. Looking at this handy graph I made, we can see how far the original release date has really slipped. The end of spring 2020 was about 10 months away from August. The end of fall 2021 is 19 months away from now. With now coincidentally being the end of spring 2020. Keep in mind that the developers had already been working on KSP 2 months before the game was announced, so we are talking about the development time of potentially 3 years for Kerbal Space Program 2, assuming they will hit their new goal of fall 2021. For calendar nerds out there, fall is usually described as the period between September 1st and November 30th. And to be honest, while I believe that this is the first time we got a somewhat realistic release date, I tend to believe the release is going to be closer to the end of that spectrum. Please keep in mind that I will be entering the realm of speculation here, although based on my own experiences working in multiple software companies, as well as from previous news about KSP2 development process. First, let's talk release dates in general. Usually they do not reflect the estimations of the developers, but the demand of sales and marketing. That's just how these things go. Many software projects nowadays regulate this by adapting the scope depending on how close or far away they are from the deadline. Fall 2021 sounds like an arbitrary deadline, because it would fall right into the very important period before Christmas, where people tend to be more willing to spend money and a lot of games are being sold. Here's the problem with going about release dates like that. Back when I met up with the developers in Seattle, I clearly remember a moment in the Museum of Flight where one of the leading people stood in front of the original Apollo capsule hatch. He admired the intricacies of the hatch opening mechanisms and suddenly got real somber, stating that something along the lines of he now realizes the, the size of the mountain that they have to climb or something like that. <laughs> Me and other KSP community members, we tr quickly tried to assure him that uh, most people won't care whether or not a hatch mechanism is replicated 100% accurately. But I believe now that he was talking more about the entire project and the immensity of it finally dawned on him. It also didn't help that all of us had very specific suggestions about a lot of aspects of space exploration. So if you want to blame at least some of the feature creep and delays on anyone, blame it on me. There is also the February statement that the team wants to pursue a larger vision for KSP2 by utilizing the resources Private Division can now provide them. For me this translates into an increased, not a reduced scope, meaning a later release date. Now here's where the original KSP comes in. Since the announcement of KSP2 we got robotic parts, ground signs and we will get comets in the upcoming 1.10 update, including parts for ESA missions and vehicles like the Ariane rocket. And knowing the KSP community, they will very likely want to have at least some of that in the sequel as well. The longer KSP2 gets delayed, the larger the mountain of features they need to add due to KSP's continued development gets. 
I confronted my contact within private division about this and they acknowledged it as a challenge they are facing. According to them, the team is currently figuring out how to approach this. Of course, they can't tell us yet which parts or features will or will not be in SQL, but they are aware of the problem and trying to solve that. Keep in mind that the article in PC Gamer also states that the part list in case P2 is already huge and they have implemented a sort of special suggestion mechanism that uh, prevents you from having to search through the entire part list to find what you need. Private Division is also searching for more stuff. According to the article, the team is already 30 men strong, but there are still open software developer and physics designer positions available for Kerbal Space Program 2. So if your skill set matches these positions and you are close to Seattle or willing to move there to kick KSP development into the next gear, you know what to do. But here is where COVID-19 comes back into the picture. These positions are open since April and it is kind of difficult to conduct job interviews and build new teams in a studio when people should stay at home and avoid social contacts. As I stated in the beginning, the Kerbal Space Program 2 development team has managed to stay healthy. According to my source, they are now all working remotely, which is of course great from a safety perspective. Whether or not that will have an adverse impact on the development is uncertain. Alright, this is all I can tell you so far. We have some interesting new details in that PC Gamer article. We also have a later release date that has the potential to slip even further into the future. While COVID-19 is very likely a significant contributor to the delay and will continue to be due to the uncertainty of the situation, the game was already on track for being late. That is at least my belief based on what I was able to observe. I still think that they should take all the time in the world to make the best game possible and from what I read in the article, they are good on their way. Just a warning though from someone who has been in this position. Sometimes you can't make the product as perfect as you want to. You have to reduce scope to get something out of the door. Prioritization is key. I can't stress this enough. If the first KSP has showed us anything, it is that you can increase the value of the game constantly, even years after the release. Dear KSP2 developers, take your time, but make sure you use it well. And above all that, to the developers, to you watching and everybody else, stay healthy, stay safe. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.